Hello, I'm that geeky gamer, and welcome to my show. Well, as we've now entered into a new year, it's time to look back and reflect a bit. And as luck would have it, 2014 also marks the beginning of a new generation of gaming consoles. Okay, so technically this new generation has been here for at least a few months now. In fact, if you want to get really technical, it actually started back in November of 2012 when the Wii U was released. However, I for one don't feel like things have really taken off until recently, and besides, it's just easier to say it begun in 2014 instead of saying it kind of started in late 2012 but didn't really get going until the end of 2013 and so on and so forth. In any case, a new gaming generation is definitely upon us, and as such, I feel obligated to talk about the old one. Yeah, I know, everyone else has already done their best and worst lists ages ago, and I probably don't have a radically different perspective on things than most of them, but hey, I have an opinion to share too, dammit. Besides, I think my list might be a little bit different than most, as I'm actually going to go over what I consider to be the most important part of any gaming generation, namely the new IPs. Oh, sure, sequels are always nice, at least as long as they're good, but the games that really evolve the medium and keeps gaming from completely stagnating are usually the new stuff. Don't get me wrong, just because it's something new doesn't automatically make it great, but again, it's usually the new stuff that adds freshness and variety to the medium. With that in mind, which titles were really the best this time around? Which games gave us new ideas, fun concepts, or just some downright awesome experiences? Well, I guess anything's debatable, but I've picked out my selections, and since I'm the one in front of the camera, that obviously means that my opinions are better than yours. So, let's not waste any more time. Let's just get right to it as I give you my choices for the top 10 best new IPs of the seventh generation of gaming. Number 10. Lost Odyssey. You know, I love the Final Fantasy franchise, but Final Fantasy XIII was just not that good. In fact, it was pretty damn bad. While playing it, I kept wondering, whatever happened to the good Final Fantasy games? Why couldn't we get more of the old school brilliance they used to have? Well, as it turns out, I was looking in the wrong place. While Square Enix was busy making a mockery of Final Fantasy, the series' original creator, Hironobu Sakaguchi, and his new studio, Mistwalker, had apparently been busy making the true successor to that same series. I'm not kidding, that's what Lost Odyssey felt like to me. It felt like this was what Final Fantasy should have been doing all along, and it was glorious. Okay, so this game isn't perfect, but it's certainly much better and more entertaining than most other JRPGs of the time. The so-called aimering system actually makes the turn-based battles more interesting and strategic, and the visual novel-style side story known as A Thousand Years of Dreams can get so good and moving that it actually might produce a few tears now and again. No matter what though, there's no doubt in my mind that this game definitely deserves a spot on this list. Okay, so at times the main character can come off as a bit emo, and it might be a bit too retro gameplay-wise for some people, but in my opinion, this is one odyssey that should not be lost by anyone. Number 9, Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch. What do you get if you combine Studio Ghibli with Pokemon? Well, a pretty great game, actually. In case you don't know, Studio Ghibli is the legendary Japanese animation company responsible for such titles as Grave of the Fireflies, Princess Mononoke, and Spirited Away. I'm a fairly big fan of their films, as they're usually pretty damn good, so when I heard that they were making a PlayStation 3 game, my reaction was, huh. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't that I thought it would be bad, but just because a company has made some truly amazing films, it doesn't necessarily mean that they can make a good game. I was interested in the game, yes, but I was not one of these guys who declared it a masterpiece just because Studio Ghibli was involved. However, I did give it a chance, and I am extremely glad I did. Not only could this be one of the best looking games on the PS3, it could also be one of the most enjoyable. As I said, it's kinda like Pokemon in that it involves capturing, developing and fighting with various creatures, but it's so much more than that as well. 
It's an epic fairy tale full of magical creatures and places, a fairly gripping storyline, and a truly gorgeous world. If you need a bit of an escape from the real world for a while, this is the game for the job. It may be somewhat lengthy, and the events can feel a bit drawn out at times, but with such an inviting world with so much to do, why would you ever want to leave? Nino Kuni is one magical journey that everyone should take. Number 8. Portal 1 and 2. This one should be pretty obvious. I don't think anyone, including the creators of the games themselves, really expected this little title, originally developed as an add-on to the orange box, to evolve into two of the best and most innovative games to ever grace the gaming scene. These games managed to provide a greater experience in just a few hours and with much simpler mechanics than most games do for their entire franchises. Although the games are somewhat simplistic in terms of gameplay mechanics, they're also pretty ingenious. The Portal Gun provides them with a ton of varied, challenging and fun puzzles to figure out, and the setting and story are absolutely fantastic. Top all of that off with one of the best villains in any video game, and what you have is a couple of true masterpieces. Okay, so the first game is rather short and most of it is pretty much just a tutorial, but that doesn't change the fact that both games are just so much fun. The Portal series is so good that I actually don't need to tell you about it. Everyone already knows it, and to those who might still have their doubts, there's only one thing that can be said. This was a triumph. I'm making a note here. Huge success. It's hard to overstate my satisfaction. Number 7. Puppeteer. Talk about a surprise treat! Well, at least in my case. You see, before I played this game, I apparently hadn't really paid attention. I thought it was sort of a casual PlayStation Move based game, as that's how it looked to me from what little I had seen of it. I did hear a few people praise it, and I eventually found out that it didn't require the move, so I decided to give it a try. And boy did it impress me! Not only was it good, it was a brilliant, aesthetically unique, funny, and at times somewhat suspenseful platformer. It was much better than I thought it would be, and I couldn't believe I had misjudged it as badly as I had. Being presented in the style of a puppet show, this game has a really distinct look and a fairly unique sort of charm that really manages to draw me in. In addition, it's also unbelievably fun and actually quite varied, especially for this kind of game. The main mechanic here is the hero, Kotaro's ability to cut almost anything you can think of, including his enemies, with his magical scissors. This leads to a lot of pretty interesting set pieces and some fairly unique boss battles. I also really like the picture book stories that unlocks throughout the game, as they can be either funny, sad, creepy, and or a little spooky, all of which just adds to the game's overall greatness. I really think anyone with a PS3 owes it to themselves to pick up a copy of this game. It just doesn't seem possible that anyone wouldn't be able to enjoy it. Oh sure, there are some things that may cause some frustration or annoyance, but they are more than overshadowed by all the things that makes this such an enjoyable experience. This is one puppet show you really don't want to miss. Number 6. The Batman Arkham Games Okay, so this may technically be a bit of a cheat, as Batman definitely isn't a new IP, not even in the world of video games, but I still consider this a new franchise. Yes, it's based on an already existing comic book character, but these games aren't really connected to any already existing series. Besides, these games are just too good to leave off this list. If it wasn't for the fact that they are technically from an already existing IP, these games would probably be much higher on the list. Seriously, they are without a shadow of a doubt among the absolute best games, not just of this generation, but of all time. There's actually very little to complain about in any of these games, and the few complaints I might have are so minor they're not even worth bringing up. Not only do these games look fantastic, but they also sound amazing and, of course, they play extremely well. They have one of the best combat systems of any franchise, some spectacular stealth mechanics, and some truly epic boss fights. The fact that they also contain some of the best heroes and villains ever created doesn't exactly hurt either, especially not when they're all portrayed as brilliantly as they are here. As several people have already said, these are probably some of the best superhero video games on the planet, and comic book geeks everywhere cried with their erotic joy when they played them, and rightfully so. If you still haven't tried these games, you need to remedy that right now. 
No gamer anywhere should live without these games in their collection, so if you haven't already, let the Dark Knight show you around Arkham today. Number 5. The Infamous Franchise Speaking of superhero games, here's another great one. One of the major differences between the two? This one is completely original. That's right, this series wasn't based on anything, so there's no doubt about whether or not it's a new IP. However, just being a new IP doesn't automatically grant the games a spot on the list, so are they any good? No. No, they're not good. They're fucking awesome! There's something remarkably satisfying about gliding and climbing around a city while sapping a bunch of villains in the face with a million volts of electricity, and these games provide plenty of opportunities to do just that. They also contain a fairly intriguing and compelling storyline, a cast of memorable and endearing characters, and several fun and varied side missions that are all well worth doing. The moral choice system also adds a decent amount of replay value to the games. Okay, so it is a bit black and white in terms of your options, and it is basically just a way of forcing you to play the games twice, but considering you'll probably end up playing them way more than that anyway, it's not really such a bad thing. All in all, these games are just fan-bloody-tastic, and they really do make you feel like a badass superhero or supervillain depending on your personal preference. They might have a few minor issues here and there, but ultimately, I would definitely recommend Becoming Infamous. Number 4. Enslaved Odyssey to the West who knew that a somewhat loose adaptation of a Chinese fantasy novel could turn into one of the greatest games of a whole generation? Well, that's exactly what Enslaved is. I have to admit, I haven't read the novel in question, in fact I didn't even know it was based on a book until long after I played it, but from what I understand, it does take quite a few liberties, most of which seem to be for the better, at least for a game. There's definitely no reason to worry that the game doesn't hold up on its own though, because it certainly does. It's filled with intense action, a wonderful, strangely inviting post-apocalyptic world, and lots of excellent platforming and adventuring. The characters are extremely well developed, and the interactions between them are amazingly compelling. What truly puts this game way ahead of others though, is its downright breathtaking acting. Both the voice acting and animation is unbelievably detailed, making every word and movement from the characters seem absolutely real. Not once can I recall ever questioning the authenticity of the characters, which can be a very tricky thing to pull off, but this game nails it. While there may be games that have slightly better gameplay or somewhat improved combat systems, very few games come even close to matching the look, feel and borderline perfect acting of this one. Enslaved is one odyssey you should definitely attempt. Number 3. The Assassin's Creed Franchise This series pretty much defines what all new IPs should be all about. A fresh new idea that adds a much needed variety to the medium. I still remember how excited I was by the very first trailer I saw for the very first game of the series, and thankfully, the game itself did not disappoint. I loved almost every part of it, but little did I know that the best was yet to come. You see, while the first game was all well and good, and it was certainly a very refreshing addition to the somewhat stale waters the industry was starting to become, the sequel raised the bar by miles and still managed to jump over it. It improved on almost every aspect of the previous game and added even more brilliance to the mix. The following sequels also brought the wrong things to the table, and while the series eventually started to waver a little, it never really reached truly bad levels. The story of the Assassins vs the Templars is one of the best, and there are very few things that are quite as satisfying as tracking down your target and ending their life with a blade to the throat. Running around on the rooftops of Renaissance Italy and interacting with a fair amount of historical figures isn't exactly boring either, and it all just blends into a marvelous mix of brilliance. As I mentioned, this franchise may not have quite the same glory it once did anymore, but it still stands as one of the very best series you can find. Nothing else has quite the same feel to it, and I hope it will continue to impress in the future. If you haven't already done so, now is the time to follow the creed. Number 2. The Uncharted series These games are fantastic! I just can't get enough of them, they're brilliant! 
Okay, so they do borrow rather heavily from stuff like Indiana Jones and the National Treasure films, but honestly, I think that just makes them all the better. Think about it, you get to play through a series of Indiana Jones-worthy adventures, searching for wondrous treasures and solving various ancient mysteries. How can that be a bad thing? Everything about these games are just so spectacularly well done. Not only do they have some unbelievably gorgeous visuals with some truly breathtaking environments and sceneries, they also have a cast of brilliantly portrayed characters, some incredibly wonderful music, and of course, some of the smoothest, most enjoyable gameplay mechanics of all time. Very few things can come close to matching these games when it comes to how much they suck you in. The stories are just so mesmerizing and captivating, and the gameplay works so well that it almost feels like the games are coming to life. There's something almost erotically satisfying about traversing all the amazing scenery while shooting a bunch of bad guys in the face and unearthing various trinkets and treasures. I have played these games countless times already, and I'm fairly certain that I'm going to play them countless times more. They're just that good. For the longest time, I was convinced that we wouldn't see anything better until at least the next generation. But as you should have noticed, there is one more spot on this list. In any case, if you feel like discovering a truly glittering gem, then this is one series you definitely shouldn't leave uncharted. And the number one best new IP of the seventh generation of gaming is... The Last of Us. no words. I have no words to properly describe just how good this game really is. I don't think the proper words exist. Oh, don't get me wrong, there are a few extremely minor issues here and there, but nothing that even comes close to detracting anything from the game's overall excellence. From the very first to the very last second of the game, everything is about as good as it could possibly be. The gameplay is smooth, the visuals are heart-stoppingly detailed, and the acting is beyond compare, especially for a video game. Seriously, this is probably the best voice acting and animation of any game ever. Not one line, not one moment from any character ever seems unnatural or fake. It's unbelievable. I'm not kidding when I said that if I didn't know any better, I'd swear these were real people and not just some computer-generated piles of data. While almost all aspects of the game are near flawless, it really is the characters that make this game truly shine. They are just perfectly developed and characterized, and if you can play this game and not connect with or feel anything for any of them by the end, you seriously don't have a shred of humanity in you. In all honesty, I could play nothing but this game for the rest of my life and not once feel like I was missing out on anything. Naughty Dog must be divine creatures, because this game is out of this world. There's just nothing more to say. The Last of Us is by far the best new IP of the seventh generation of gaming. So there they are, my choices for the best of the best this past generation. However, some of you may feel that there are a few more titles that really should have been here, and you know what? I kinda do too. Therefore, before I end this video, I'm going to give you a quick list of my top 5 runners-up that, for one reason or another, didn't quite make it onto the list itself. It could be that I just haven't played that much of them, if at all, or I just didn't think they were quite good enough for the top 10. In any case, these are my top 5 runners-up. With that over with, there's nothing left for me to do except to thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you again next time. Bye.